What's up everyone, April here. Welcome or welcome back to my channel where we talk all things the Power Platform in Microsoft 365. All right, my fellow Power Appers, we need to have a chat. If any of you have used the Navigate function in your app on start, then you need to be aware of some changes that are coming down the pike that are going to affect how we build our Power Apps. Now, I don't want you to stress out. These changes are actually good because it's going to help us quite a bit with our performance, but you do need to be aware so that you can start addressing it and get ahead of this. So I'm gonna walk you through what this change is and how to address it right after this. Okay, so these changes that I'm talking about were announced in this blog post by Greg Lindhorst on October 20th, 2021. So I'm gonna to try to summarize what Greg is saying in this blog post and talk about what the ramifications of this are. Any of you that have watched my channel and are building Power Apps, you've probably all seen me use and use yourself the app on start. It's really good for doing things like caching data. And another thing that we might do with the app on start is to use the navigate function to move to different screens. So a case like this, I've shown this in some of my videos, you might have a parameter that you wanna pass into your Power App and based off what that parameter is, you might navigate to a different screen. Now, while the app on start is so widely used and it's even recommended in some Microsoft performance documentation to use it, there's one essential problem with that and it's that it's imperative. You might've seen one of my previous YouTube shorts about imperative versus declarative programming. Power Apps is based on Excel and it uses a declarative programming language. And really what declarative programming means is you're able to tell the system what you want it to do, but you don't have to tell it how to do it. It's up to the system to figure that out. With imperative programming though, that's what some traditional programming languages like C Sharp, for example, JavaScript use. That's the complete opposite. You have to give the step-by-step -step and tell it what exactly you want it to do. And what we mean by the app on start in Power Apps being imperative is the way that it runs, it's kind of an unordered list of work that has to be done before the first screen in your Power App even loads. And this is really specific about not only what needs to be done, but when it needs to be done and what order. And that actually means it can have a detrimental effect on performance optimizations. So one of the things that Microsoft figured out was as they started pushing the integration and seeing more integration with Power Apps inside of Microsoft Teams, it really started to become apparent how this app on start was affecting the performance of Power Apps and Teams. Now, quick app load times are extremely important no matter what kind of application you're using. I know you've heard me all talk about this in some of the sessions that I give. Performance is really essential and it's the foundation of any great app. If your app is super slow to run, no matter how beautiful it is, no one's going to wanna use it. And when we're talking about integration with Teams, that's super critical because apps don't stay in memory there. They're expected to open and close within a few seconds. So when they did some analysis on why they were having such slow load times for Power Apps inside of Teams, they found out it was the app on start and it's imperative way of doing things. So fast forward a few months later, they decided to see how they could offer some declarative approaches to doing some of the things that we do in the app on start, because that will in turn help performance. So that's where we're at now. And this is why I said in the beginning, don't freak out because I really wanna make sure that you understand that there are no plans to get rid of the app on start. But what they're trying to do is making using the app on start be the exception to the rule rather than the rule. So you're not being forced to change anything today and the applications you have out there already with code in the app on start will continue to function. But what they're doing is, is they're rolling out a new property called start screen. So there in the app section, we'll have a new property called start screen. So starting in Power Apps version 3.21101 or later, you will see this new start screen property. So to see what version of Power Apps you're in, if you open up your Canvas app in edit mode and go to its settings and then go to support, you'll see here the authoring version and then you'll know if you're in the correct version which has this new property. Or of course, you can simply click on your app in the left-hand navigation and then click on the dropdown and you should see this start screen property. So one of the things that we'll do often in our app on start is where we might use the navigate function to dynamically move to a different screen depending on a certain condition. 
So this training application is a perfect example of where I've personally did this. So what I'm doing here is I'm looking for a few key parameters. So that's something that you pass into the URL and Power Apps is able to read that with the param function. So in this case, what I'm using the parameters for is I want to be able to pass in a parameter an ID of a specific course. And if I pass in the ID of that course, then I want it to take me directly to the screen with the details about that course rather than the landing screen. So that is what I would do here. I would say if my parameter of the item ID is not blank, look up that course information and then navigate to the training details screen. Now, however, this isn't really performant. As using that imperative logic, all this stuff has to happen and run before the first screen is even rendered. That's going to really kill our load times. So what the start screen property is doing is specifically giving us a way to put those navigate formulas in the start screen property. And that property uses a declarative approach, therefore really helping your performance. And the key difference here is this new star screen property isn't describing work to be done, it's describing a calculation. So when we're using this new start screen property, we don't have to use the navigate function. So I can simply directly check for that parameter in my case, and I can say if it equals whatever I need it to equal, then go to this screen, otherwise go to that screen. So that means my logic of what screen to go to is independent from anything else going on in my app on start. So if we look at my app on start on my training app, you see that I am caching some data. I'm pulling in information about the current user, and then I want to go pull in their photo. So now if I start using that new start screen property, that means that this code here that I have on start can run at the same time as the start screen, which means we can show the first screen of our applications to our users before all of my app on start code is finished. So again, huge for performance here. So let's just update this application and use that new property and see how this could work. So on my app on start, I'm gonna leave these two set functions and I'm gonna comment everything else out because all of this is just routing me to the screen using the navigate and checking parameters and I wanna use the new property for that. So I'm gonna click on our app and I'm going to go to the new start screen. And here is where I can do the if, I can say if and then use my param function, put in the name of the parameter, and for simplicity's sake, I'm just gonna create a new one so we can see this. So I might say ID, and I simply wanna see if that value is not blank. So I'm gonna do a not is blank, and wrap that in my param ID. So meaning if they do fill out an ID, then I wanna to go to a screen called training details. Otherwise, take them to training landing. So it's really that simple. That's all there is to it. And we're gonna see a huge performance savings. So what I'm gonna do is we'll save this application. We'll publish. I'm going to go back to the make portal and I'm going to get the URL of my application. So I'm gonna click on the details here. I'm gonna copy this web link and we'll append that query string parameter. So I'm gonna do and ID equals, and I'm gonna try five. Hopefully there's an item with an ID of five in that list. And we'll see what happens. And there you go, hopefully you saw just how fast that was. It was almost instantaneous that I was able to evaluate that. It took me right here to the detail screen. And you see if I remove my parameter, almost instantaneous again, it takes me to my landing screen. So although you're not going to be forced to use this property right now, I definitely encourage you to go through your app on start, see if you're using that navigate function anywhere, and if so, move it to this new start screen property. And when I mention I'm not forcing you to use this, I wanna let you know about a property that you can configure. So in your application, if you go to the settings and go to upcoming features, we'll see an option for retired. And if we scroll down, you'll see this option here for enable navigate function and app on start. So you'll notice that this is going to be turned on by default. That's what they mean by they're not forcing us to have to move the stuff off of our app on start. Now this is going to be set to on for all of your existing Power Apps so that your on start code with Navigate will be supported. And that's another thing, this only applies to Navigate. This isn't affecting the ability to use on start for anything else, just Navigate. So this will be turned on for existing applications, but if I were to go into Power Apps here and we'll do a new Canvas application, we'll just call this Test 2, and we go to the settings here and upcoming features retired, 
you see that it's turned to off on any new Canvas applications that you create. And what it will do, the behavior, if you try to use a Navigate in your app on start, I'll give you a look at what will happen if we do that. So I'm gonna to go to on start. I'm just gonna say Navigate screen one. And if you look at our app checker, we instantly got a little red mark there. And if we look at the errors, we see that Navigate is not permitted on start because that feature is toggled to off. Now, of course, you do have the ability to go into the settings and features and turn that on for your new applications if you really wanted to use that. But I would definitely encourage you not to do that and embrace that new start screen property. Now, lastly, though, you might run into an issue here that I want you to be aware of. So while this feature to enable you to still use the navigate function in your app on start should be enabled for all of your existing applications, there is one caveat that I want you to be aware of. If you created a Power App before March 2021, and when you created that application, you didn't have a Navigate function at all inside of your App on Start, but then you went in and added a Navigate function into your App on Start between March 2021 and now, then this will actually be turned off and you'll see that error that we just looked at there in the App Checker. But the fix is simple. Just go right here into the settings, upcoming features, retired, and just turn that on and the errors will go away and your app will function properly. So I know this is a lot to take in. Some of you have already reached out to me and spotted the new start screen property. I believe John was one of the ones that reached out to me about this recently. So I wanted to make sure that you're aware of what that property is and what's happening and what the roadmap is here. So here's my advice. I would really encourage you all to look through your Canvas apps, look at the OnStart code and see if we're using the Navigate function. And if you are, hopefully you see how easy it is based off what I just showed to use the Start Scheme property. So I would encourage you to take those Navigate functions out of your OnStart and into that new Start Scheme property so that you can take advantage of the performance impacts. And if and when the app OnStart Navigate function compatibility is ever turned off or goes away completely, then you're ahead of the game and you're prepared. So while this might be a little bit of work for you to go and look through your on start code and switch that over to the start screen, it really is going to help us in the long run. I'd love to hear what you think about this new functionality, so drop a note there in the comments and let me know your thoughts. If you found this video helpful, check out some of my other videos about Power Apps. Thank you so much for watching. Do me a big favor and hit that subscribe button, and I'll catch you in the next video.